Well, now to a KLD News 13 special report. Drop calls, no GPS navigation, and even your ATM card not working. Sounds a little scary, doesn't it? But it can all happen, all because of the sun. First Alert meteorologist Aaron Pickering joins us now to explain. You know, Mark, we are increasingly using satellites for things like communication and navigation, but more storms on the sun could potentially leave us with no signal. To most people, the sun is constant, rising in the east and setting in the west. But the sun is actually very active and constantly changing. Scientists with the National Solar Observatory here in southern Arizona, like Matt Penn, study the sun, and in particular, sunspots. On the sun, we have sunspots with huge magnetic fields, and they're the source of two things that affect us on Earth, solar flares and also coronal mass ejections. Most of the time, this matter is hurled into space, but sometimes these solar storms are shot toward the Earth at speeds of more than a million miles a minute. The impact on nature is dramatic. And what happens when a magnetic gas cloud comes out from the sun and interacts with the Earth's magnetic field is it accelerates particles here in the Earth's environment. And those can impact our atmosphere, causing aurora uh, from glowing molecules in our atmosphere. So we've known about uh, solar uh, interactions for a long time, and those are some of the most beautiful interactions that we can see. Whether you realize it or not, we use satellites in nearly everything we do, whether it be using your bank card, from finding our way down the street. Turn left on West Portland Cane Road. The particles from a solar flare can disrupt the electronics in a satellite and cause dropouts in communication. So if you're using your GPS device and the GPS satellite goes out, then you're lost and, and stuck without navigation. When I was driving to Kitt Peak one morning, a communication satellite was knocked out. And as I was in Three Points trying to buy gas at the pay-at-the-pump uh, service station, I couldn't because the link between the pay-at-the-pump and my bank was broken because the satellite was offline from the solar storm. Solar storms not only impact satellites, but actually can cause a current through transmission lines here on Earth, possibly causing damage. So in 1989, in, uh, in Quebec, in Canada, uh, millions of people were without power in the winter uh, because within 30 seconds, the currents uh, overloaded some of the circuitry and caused a, a massive power outage. Um, during a sunspot cycle maximum, those events are more likely to occur, and so we may be facing more of those in the future. Steps can be taken to prevent damage and outages. Critical circuits can be shut down while solar storms are happening, or the satellite can have a shield installed. You know, whether or not a company protects its satellites enough is really a, a money issue. Um, the shielding that's necessary to protect your circuits uh, is extra weight, and that's the whole cost of launching a satellite is the weight. So uh, in particular in hard economic times, companies are trying to do things uh, on a narrow profit margin. And so they may skimp on some of the shielding. In that case, we may be more vulnerable to solar uh, disruption. Solar storms are expected to peak on Earth around 2013. Now, the work that's being done that you saw right there is being done on Kip Peak and will hopefully allow scientists to better predict when solar storms will occur. Now, right now, uh, you were able to, we we're able to react to the eruptions, but not predict when they're going to happen. You can find out a lot more. I've written up a whole article on KOLD.com as well as uh, finding out more about the sunspot cycle or even a group of people exposed to a massive amount of x-rays while they work because of solar storm activity. You can find that all on KOLD.com. I'm First Alert Meteorologist Aaron Pickering, live local, late breaking. Unbelievable video.